Hey you guys, this is Hydra Noob, and I'm going to be doing a, uh, well this is going to be the first video in a three part series of some uh, C Sharp tutorials. So, these are kind of my first tutorials, I made a whole thing about databases and it turned out to be about 40 minutes long and really kind of just everywhere. So I went ahead to scrap this and I decided to make this video, so if they're, uh, well never never mind, don't worry about it, don't even worry about it man. Um, basically this is going to be a series about storing data and storing uh, values between runtime sessions, I guess you could call it. Um, forgive my terminology if it's wrong. But basically what that means is you're storing a value that you can access post, uh, post runtime. So I guess what I'm trying to say is it's something, it's a permanent value that stays there even if you close your program. As opposed to something like if you create a variable and it's in a program, it's gonna, when you close the program, it's gonna be gone, poof. But, um, yeah. So, hopefully, I'm not gonna ramble too bad. That was kind of rambled about shit. What did I click? Anyway, um, I'm gonna be using Visual Studio Professional. Uh, Visual C Sharp Express works for this. I expect that you have a pretty basic, at least a basic knowledge of, uh, pretty, at least, yeah, at least a basic knowledge of C Sharp or oriented, object oriented programming. So, uh, not limited to, but including variables, object creation, uh, basic syntax, etc. But um, this is going to be the first. Actually, you know what? We're just going to create a Windows form really quick. Sorry if I kind of go off topic, but um, store, oops, storing data. We Windows form. But uh, anyway, this first method, this is uh, obviously the first part of a three part series. This first method is going to be using something called the application settings. And what these are, are I, I, application settings is the best way I can describe it. They're settings that are in an application, I guess. But the advantage of them is that they stay there and they're hands down the easiest way to uh, accomplish the task of storing these permanent variables. At least in my opinion, there's likely other methods out there. But um, I'm just gonna, this bugs me, so I'm gonna change that. So we've got our form here. Uh, I can't handle conventional or default naming, so yes. Okay, we have our form here, and uh, I'm just going to use the same form for all three tutorials, and uh, then we can re not reuse it, but add to it it's for each one, so you have a really easy comparison of the three methods. But anyway, uh, to get started, I'm going to go ahead. Don't worry too much about the formatting of stuff or. I mean, I'm basically if I just watch it for the basic code aspect or the uh, gist of it, I guess you could say. So uh, data one text box. Sorry, my screen's not bigger. I'd pin that otherwise. We're also gonna need a button here. It's gonna need two buttons. And you know what? I'm just going to whatever. I'm not even gonna use the label. I'm just gonna keep this really simple. So. Basically, what I have here is uh, three buttons, and this first button is going to store data. So, call this store button, and store. And then the second button is going to show the data. Button. And um, basically, the text box is going to be the data you want to store. So, show data. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So we have a pretty basic form here. Sure, sure data, show sure data, text box. None of these are going to do anything whatsoever. You should know that. You should know that. If you don't know that, then you shouldn't be here. Just kidding. No, feel free. But anyway, now to get into the actual coding part of it, I'm going to go ahead and double click our story data button. It's going to bring up the uh, click event. And in here, I'm going to want to create a variable, and this is just, we're just going to, actually no, before I get to that, disregard any of that, we're going to get to our settings first, so the application settings, and how you get to those, you're going to right click storing data, come down here to properties, or you can just do alt enter, it's going to up this thing, this is not what you're looking for, this is just stupid, it's like Lori from The Walking Dead, but um, anyway, you're going to come down here on the side and you're going to click this little tab called settings, it's going to blow your mind. And you have a little table here like this. Um, if you're familiar at all with databases, it should feel somewhat similar in the way of the table formatting. 
but it's a lot simpler. Trust me, it's way simpler. So to create our first thing, you know what? Here, I'm just do a call a string, and then we'll call this int. Okay, sorry, int integer, and we'll call this last one boolean. Okay, so string integer and boolean. Okay, obviously you're gonna try and make this an int. And we're going to make this boolean. So uh, default values of these various things are nothing, zero, and false. When you change your uh, data type in here, there's basically any sort of... You can actually even do uh, various objects, I guess you could call it. But um, the scope here, you don't want to worry too much about that. Uh, uh, telling it that the uh, scope is the application, it's going to throw it off and it's not it's going to make it so you can't don't change the scope you won't be able to it'll give you a read only error and it's just don't do it but anyway i don't think we need this anymore so once you've come down here you right click on your project properties and come down to settings and made these when you just close that this is gonna blow your mind pretty hard actually no um all right for ease of access i'm just gonna create a string uh data is equal to data box. What did I make? I can't remember what I named it. Crap. Oh, I just named it data one box. There we go. It makes more sense now. So data one box dot text. There we go. So you're basically creating a string data which has the its value is whatever uh, characters are in this box. So, to store this between in, in the application settings, you're going to have to access properties. Properties. Dot set. Oh, you know what? I wonder if you can just go to settings. Nope. You got to go to properties first. So, properties. Dot settings. Dot default. And then this is going to contain, contain all of your values and all of the uh, methods that are useful for settings. So, we're going to come down here to string. And... So this is this is a value create we created if you remember that, and we're gonna set it equal to data. Now, it's basically you're working with variables. That's what make this that's yeah, <laughs> that's what makes this so just incredibly simple and easy to do. Wow, I'm at eight minutes already. Um. Anyway, I'll try and get this over real quick. Sorry about that. But you're basically working with variables. And you don't have to worry about SQL and you don't have to worry about writing anything. It's super simple um, so that value is there now it's the only problem is it's like a word document I guess you could say or any type of document where you can type all the text you want and you click close and it's gone you have to save it so you're gonna come here and you're gonna go property settings default and you're gonna call it save method right there and that's gonna actually save the data and lock it in so it'll be there forever I guess you could say and actually, no, I'm going to create one more button. And this last button down here is going to be called Reset Button. And it's going to have the text. Sorry if I'm moving kind of qu quickly. Reset V. I don't want V. Okay. So those are three buttons. Um, we have that. And so I'm going to move on to the show data button. And all we're going to do for this is show a message box. Message box that show. And then uh, we're going to access our properties. Dot settings. Dot default. Dot string. And then we're going to go ahead and do saved data for the window title. So basically what we have so far is actually I'll just show you. So what it's going to do is you're going to say, let's say, say well, I'll, I'll show you what it shows first. So if I do show data, it's going to show a blank string. That's what a blank string looks like. There's nothing. So I'm, then I'm going to type in the word hello and go at store data. Now I'm going to show data. It's going to couple with hello. But if I close it and reopen it, I'm going to show you, show you data again, and hello still going to come up. So even if you close your program, as long as you've called that save method, it'll be there. 
and as long as you, I don't I think as long as you don't delete the executable, it'll actually just stay there forever. So there's no, that's the other thing in size, there's no external files that you have to worry about. It's just all part of the executable, I think. Let me check the debug folder. Uh, document. Documents. Sorry about that. Uh, 2010. Projects. Oh god, what did I, storing data is right. Sorry, I'm like getting really off track here. Yeah, so Ben debug. I believe you can just delete all of these and oh yeah here let me change this to stop and let me change this to release so I can mess with these so I delete those yes yes I would like to oh wow it's doing that again wow way to go windows just kidding but in any way debug I'm gonna run it again it's got to build everything again show data yep I was right, so I, I just wanted to test that really quick. So as long as you don't delete the executable, the data will stay there. So like I said, it's nice because it's all just together. Now the only problem with this, or actually there's a couple of drawbacks. The first one is that you don't have an external file to work with, so that means that if you have any other application that needs to access it, you can't. You have to, uh, the only way it can be accessed is from this project or this executable. And the other drawback, oh, I guess that's it. Oh, no, the other drawback is you can only have one set of saved data. So it's not like a database where you can have different users or like a stream writer, which will be the next tutorial, where you can have just multiple, I guess you could say, sets of data. You can only store one set at a time. Now, you can have different strings in here, but then you're also limited to the number of string, number of, uh, very uh, whatever you number of settings you actually create so um one the last thing here i'm going to go to the reset button i'm just going to show you message box oh no and i'm going to tell you about the reset method which is really nice and it's kind of a kind of important i guess you could say about reset so properties of settings the default in this reset method that you're calling and what this does is it just sets, here, let me open the settings again. Oh, and the settings are going to be in this file, properties, settings, dot settings. Basically, it resets everything here to, or it sets everything to the default values that it was, you assigned here. So if I set this to cow, it'll revert to cow when I call the reload, or re reset method. But don't judge me. Sorry. So just to show you how that works, if I, uh, if I show data, it's going to say hello. If I click reset and show data, it's going to show nothing. So, um, basically that was the first method in this three-part series. I hope you uh, got something out of it. This is an important skill to have, especially when you're uh, kind of getting, you're somewhat new to programming. You're trying to figure out how you can write code and have it actually interact with your computer. So, you're, this is kind of where you're going beyond just making calculators or... Uh, generators or simple things like that this is the next step so uh, i kind of hope you guys enjoyed it if you uh liked it feel free to like like my video just kidding but anyway uh this is i guess you could say it's my first tutorial and uh, i'm gonna have two more on the way the second one's gonna be about uh system io which is input output and then the third one is going to be about databases and I'm assuming both of those are going to be significantly longer. But uh, with any luck, I'm going to stop rambling. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next video. Bye.